Neighbors, take a look. It's a rainy type of day. I was just thinking, why don't we do some takumtang? Takumtang is like a Korean uh, chicken rice soup. It's very comforting. We're gonna bring out the chicken's natural juices, add a little bit of rice, and then cook it very quickly. When you finish a bowl, you draw all the energy from that soup. It's very nutritious, and then it has you just feeling good for the rest of the night. I think you'll love it, and I'll show you how. The first ingredient here is optional, but we got to get it soaking. These are those tangmyeon noodles that we use to make chapcha. These are the Korean glass noodles that are made out of sweet potato starch. I like to just lay them out in a large frying pan. Of course, once they get soft, you can move it to a bowl. These noodles, when you add it at the end, oh, it just gives it such nice texture. I love it. And then next, we're using a whole chicken. And the reason why we're using a whole chicken is because all of the flavor lies in the bones. So we're gonna boil this whole. This one is around 800 grams. You can use around a two pound chicken. Now for this broth, we don't want it too oily. So there's a few places where we can trim. First part is this booty part. You can cut this off. There's a lot of fat that releases when you cook that, so. And then near the cavity of the chicken, you're gonna see a lot of excess skin. So this is gonna produce a lot of oil and we don't need all that oil. We just cut this extra skin off, all right? Same thing on the other side. And one last part, if you look at the inside, you're gonna see a lot of the innards that are still left. This part, if you boil it, it just turns the broth dirty and sometimes even bitter. So what we wanna do is rinse this under water and get all of this out. You can get in there with your finger or if you feel really iffy, you can just use a spoon and scrape out all right, now the inside is very clean, and then we're gonna just place the chicken inside. Now I recommend using a large pot. That's because we're gonna add three liters of water. That way you have enough broth at the end. If you wanna make a second or third bowl, go right ahead. All right, and this should be enough to cover it. And then of course our aromatics. I have two spring onions. I went to the farmer's market today, so we even have stems on these spring onions, which is good, perfect for the broth. I'm gonna have to give these guys one more rinse before we put them in and a quick chop. So this is around four or five forearm length pieces. Make sure to include the white portion because that's where the flavor is. Then we have one onion. I'm gonna chop this in half because this onion's pretty big. All right, and then some garlic, of course. Let's do around 10 cloves. All right, and for the garlics, you can give a little smash. And I have to mention, since we have beginner cooks, make sure your knife is facing downward so you're not like, ah! that's a horror story. That is a horror story. Don't even pretend. All right, everyone else into the pool. Let's get this in, our onion, and then our garlic crew. Come on in, give it a blessing. And optional, if you have bay leaves in your pantry, you can add like two in. Actually, I'm gonna add another one. If you don't have bay leaves at hand, completely skip it. Lid on, and let's bring it to a boil on high heat. In Korea, spring onion is called tepa. Te is the Korean character for big, and pa just means onion, so big onion. Excellent. Just put this on the side. And at the restaurants, to cater to that Korean taste where we always love a little bit of spice, we're gonna make a spicy paste from gochugaru that you can dab on to your soup. This is optional. If you don't like spicy, you can completely skip this. Two tablespoons of gochugaru and two. Then we're gonna add one teaspoon, that's small tea. And then later when our broth is ready, we're gonna add three tablespoons of our chicken broth. Mix it together, it's nice. Ooh, it's smelling good already. We're gonna keep it on a high heat. We're gonna set a timer for 30 minutes. <laughs> Now, some people ask me why I put on the Klingon film. No, it's not because I wanna remind you of being at your grandparents' house. <laughs> when we stir fry, those oil bubbles, they go to the top and they get stuck here, right? This is sticky, we gotta clean this. Yeah, this is sticky. You see it stick? Oh. All right, after the timer is set, we're gonna let this continue to boil on high heat for seven minutes. After seven minutes, we're gonna reduce that to a medium because if it keeps boiling on these confident big boy bubbles, no more broth left. So after seven minutes, let's reduce it to a medium. All right, seven minutes has passed and we'll reduce this high flame to about a medium. Like that. All 
All right, the bird is chirping. That's 30 minutes. Ah, that's beautiful. We're gonna grab the chicken and we're gonna put it outside. And then we'll temporarily turn off the heat for a second. We're gonna let this cool down first for about five or 10 minutes. And then we're gonna shred it with our hands into bite-sized pieces. And now while you're waiting for the chicken to cool down, if you take a look at my broth, there's very little oil spots on top. If you had a very fatty chicken or you forgot to trim stuff off, go ahead and skim the layer off. You can skim off some of that oil. And you don't have to get everything. I think this is already good enough because that also adds flavor. I want you to give it a nice taste. Ooh, the broth is light and refreshing, but I think we want a little bit more of a deeper taste. So we're gonna give a second boil with the leftover chicken bones for about 15 more minutes. All right, now get on some kitchen gloves. And then this drumstick and the leg part, I like to serve it whole on the soup because it just makes it look very nice. So we won't shred this portion. We'll just cut it off. Oh, same thing for this side. Ah, we don't even need the knife. It's just coming right off. And then let's get to shredding. You can just... The chicken breast is not overcooked. It's, uh, it, it's perfect. I should have waited more, but I can't. Hot. Get the meat between the wings. This is some of the best part. Oh, yes. You know, this reminds me of buying like the Costco rotisserie chickens. And then when I was really young, my mom would uh, shred the entire chicken like this. <laughs> and one chicken should provide enough serving for around two bowls. Oh, and we've come across the wishbone here. All right, neighbors, you're on the left side. I'm on the right side. Let's see whose wish comes true. Oh no, y'all won. Don't tell me what you wish for. That's wish making 101. Remember I told you to save the bones. Don't toss this yet. All right, it's back in. Put this on a high heat. 15 minutes on the clock. And this last boil, don't use the lid so that the broth can reduce and concentrate. And uh, we should be good. All right, we're almost done. Let's get back to the shredded chicken. One tablespoon of sesame oil and then a few cracks of black pepper. And then let's just mix this through. And no need to salt the chicken because we're going to season the broth. Okay, this is ready. Very good. All right, you can hear the chirping. That was 15 minutes. And take a look at the chicken broth. It looks a lot thicker, huh? You see that color is now almost milky. Very nice. What we'll do now, we're gonna add in one tablespoon of salt. This is gonna just add a little bit of oomph so that the chicken broth tastes really nice, but it's still gonna taste under seasoned. And then when we serve this dish on the side, we're gonna give a little bit of salt and black pepper. And then it's up to the guest to do the final uh, seasoning for themselves. Okay, let's get that mixed in. You can scoop this out if you like and just work with broth. But I like having the pieces in here because when you boil it, there's extra flavor that comes out. So I'll just leave it be. And takumtang is usually served in a tupegi bowl like this. If you don't have one, you can always just cook it in a regular pot like this. First thing that goes in, remember the soft Korean tangmyeon noodles. If you're using this, again, this is optional. They've been soaking for a long time. They're nice and soft. It's not gonna take too much boiling to get them nice and cooked through. You can eat rice on the side and just have the soup, but a lot of the restaurants, they'll actually put the rice right inside. This is about one standard cup of cooked rice. All right, put it right in the middle. Again, I'm gonna show you the restaurant style. <laughs> then we're gonna get a handful of our shredded chicken. We're gonna put it on top of the rice and then our beautifully soaked chicken thigh. Oh my gosh. We'll put that in the back there. And then from our pot, we're gonna bless it with our beautiful soup broth. Oh my goodness. I think that's good enough. Top it off with a little bit of green onions on top. <laughs> then of course, a little bit of black pepper. Put the heat on. We're gonna wait till it gets bubbling hot. All right, and there it is. Once it's piping hot, we're ready to go. Turn off the heat. Oh man. I'm gonna grab it. Oh, be careful. Don't lose it. Too much work. We have some kaktugi on the side. Then we just have a mixture of salt and black pepper. And then remember our spicy sauce. If you wanna make this, we're gonna add in three tablespoons. Three tablespoons. That's one, two, and three. It's gonna get a little bit chunky, which is what we like. And if you wanna make your tangkum tang spicy, you just need to add a dab of this. All right, guys, I want you to grab a little bit of the broth. Give it another taste. Ooh, I wanna add just a little bit more. Remember I said it's up to you to add more seasoning if you like. I think that would be good enough for me. Actually, while I was trying to take photos, the rice soaked in some of the broth. So I'm gonna add a little bit more broth. 
All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more salt, get that mixed in, give it a taste. It's wonderful. The first thing that you wanna do is this tempting piece of chicken. Use your chopsticks. This hasn't been seasoned, remember? Go into the salt and pepper mix, and then take a big bite. Oh my gosh, the bone fell out is so good, guys. And then we gotta go in for some of our rice and soup. Take a bite, you see there's some of the vermicelli noodles there. Oh my gosh. One of the best soups. You, now after a while, if you wanna switch things up and make it a little spicy, you can add this in, right? I would recommend trying it like the original style first, because once you add this paste in, the color changes and the, and the flavor profile changes as well. And then give it a final taste. Neighbors, I truly hope you do give this a try. It's called Takum Tang. And next time, rain comes down, cook it up. Thank you.